Aloha, my internet family. How are you today? Welcome back to Practical Printing. Today, we are going to get up close and personal with the Frozen Shuffle SLA resin printer. Let's get to it. So the Frozen Shuffle was sent over to me by our friends over at Filament One to play with and have some fun with. The Shuffle is the baby brother of the lineup. There's actually three in the product line. There's the Shuffle XL, which has a large uh, tablet-sized build volume. And then there's the new Shuffle 4K which has the same build volume as the Shuffle, but it has a higher resolution 4K screen. There's also an optional LED upgrade available for this that allows it for curing faster and uh, producing a little bit crisper layers, but I think it does quite well on its own. My intention today isn't to put this information out to you as a review, but rather I wanna show you the printer itself up close and personal and show you the features and the functions of the printer, talk about it a little and help you make an informed decision on if it's the right unit for you. Let's dig into it a little bit. It has a 5.5 inch 2K LCD screen um, capable of doing a high resolution 47 micrometers in the XY resolution it has a para LED matrix optical engine, which they claim to be 90% optical uniformity, which is better than the conventional COB LED. Uh, and that's rated at a full 50 watts. You do not need a computer to operate it. It can be uh, con controlled via the touch panel on the front or via USB or via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, but you can actually launch everything from the front panel touch screen. As twin linear rails and a ball screw for a highly stable Z-axis and zero warping, and it has a one-year warranty, uh, limited warranty. The tech specs on it are printer size is 28 by 28 by 42 centimeters. Weight whopping weighing at a whopping 16 kilograms. It is a steel chassis. Um, and your print volume is 120 millimeters by 68 millimeters by 200 millimeters. And with a X resolution of 47 micrometers and a Z resolution of 10 micrometers. Um, and a maximum printing speed of 30 millimeters per hour and recommended layer heights of 10 to 100 micrometers. Now, that is reading through the tech specs. Let's actually take a look at the unit. From the front, you can see that it has the clear red screen and a hinge style door that allows you easy access to the print as well as the touch screen. Let me move these models out of the way here so that you can see that closer and I can rotate it a bit. You have the control touchscreen on the front. Inside you have the vat and it comes with a protective cover so that you can keep that on there but cover it uh, so that there's no UV exposure when you're not using it. It has an easy level build plate that is attached with the single screw at the top. There's two screws on either side for um, allowing it to be a single point calibration. And it's just very easily removed like that. On your Z axis, you have a large ball screw and two linear rails and all heavy plated uh, aluminum pieces there. Uh, and as I mentioned, it is a steel chassis. You can see that I have this stuck on the side. You can see that the whole thing is magnetic. 
Um, it is beefy and it's not going anywhere. Let's close the lid and take a look around the unit itself. Again, we have the touch screen on the front. On the left side, you've got a larger fan here. Now, one complaint I do have about the unit is the fans are quite loud. Uh, no more so than a desktop PC, but the, it, is, it is quite a bit of hum. Um, and only just a minor criticism is that when the UV is firing inside, UV light does leak out the side just a little bit. So if you have any resin spills or drips uh, on your, your countertop, it could be a, a little bit of accidental exposure there. Um, not a major deal, and there are actually some printable fan shrouds that people have posted on Thingiverse that you can cover this and create a, a kind of a duct to channel that. On the back of the unit, we have a, another fan, um, a standard IEC power connection here with a fuse and a switch that powers the unit. Down here at the bottom, we have access to the internal Raspberry Pi, and I'll come back to this in a bit, but if you want to use Wi-Fi with this, there is a little optional USB dongle that you just connect. You can also go wired ethernet. And again, my other little criticism here in something that's easily missed during setup is there's two control boards inside here. The printer control board itself, uh, which I believe is a ramps, standard ramps board because it's not doing much. Then there is a Raspberry Pi. To allow the Raspberry Pi to control the ramps, rather than having it internal, they use this short USB cable and basically create a loop through. And that is the unit itself in a nutshell. Okay, I mentioned the Raspberry Pi inside here, and the Raspberry Pi runs a backend called Nano DLP, which is an open source project that's licensed by Frozen to be skinned and used in their printer. Aside from providing it easy file access, it also allows you the ability to just upload a file over the unit's web page uh, directly to it and use a built-in onboard slicer for generating simple prints. Now, if you're doing anything complicated, you're going to want to use an external software package to do that. Frozen has one called um, uh, Frozen One, which is their software package for slicing and dicing and hollowing models, et cetera, et cetera. But you're not limited there because you can just upload the STL to it. You can use a hybrid solution like I've been using where I actually use Prusa Slicer to bring in a model into Prusa Slicer, add my supports, visualize it, export the STL, and bring that into the onboard slicer and let it actually do the onboard separation. That way my resin profiles are stored right in the unit. It also works with other software programs that's, that are well supported such as G2Box and uh, uh, Formware, I believe supports it. So you're not limited. You have options um, depending on what works in your workflow. Or if you're using any of those other software packages with other SLA printers and you're comfortable with them, it slides easily into your workflow. I didn't want to make a big focus on the the models because the print quality from this is stellar and it's comparable with other SLA printers in its class, but I did have a few here that I, I, I wanted to mention. Um, the, these first two are Captain America by Eastman, available over on my mini factory. This one was just done and painted because it shows the, the detail in, in, you know, incredibly. Um, and this one actually is done in a flexible resin and it will bounce. Um, so that was kind of fun. Of course, we have Luby 3 ds Pig, uh, Piggy, and that's also available over on my mini factory. I've got this I Sushaline sh thingy here uh, over on prisoprinters.org by a gentleman named Brandon. I don't know how to pronounce the word that's the name of the shape. Um, 
but it, it was a great model just to show the intricate detail on some of these lines. Uh, so detailed, in fact, that I'm scared to even remove the supports because I think I would break it. Then, of course, we have the fun to do dragon, which I believe was the first print that I ran. Um, and this was uh, available on the USB stick from Filament One uh, that came with some fun to do resin. Of course, the open source hardware ring available over on Thingiverse is always good. And then there was Brie by Artie Creator. Uh, Brie, I think, was my masterpiece on this as the orange pieces were printed on the Prusa SL1, but all of the green pieces, the, the body and the head and the, the, the baby doll and such, were all done on the shuffle. Um, beautiful model by, by them, RD Creator, the Voodoo Brie. And I'll have links to these models down below. I've posted all of these uh, pictures of all these models at various stages over on Twitter if you wanted to see close-up pictures of any of them. So I think we'll wrap it there. Um, if you have any further questions that I didn't cover on the Frozen Shuffle, uh, leave, leave questions down below. Again, it's this is the baby brother to the Shuffle XL, which has an iPad-sized build volume. Uh, and then there's the Shuffle 4K, which has a similar size build volume, but a higher resolution. And these are all available over at Filament One in the US. I'm not sure internationally what other vendors might have it. Thanks again to Filament One for sending this to me to play with. It's It's been a pleasure. It's a great machine. It is definitely sturdy, and I can see this lasting a long time. Um, mechanically, I don't see any problems popping up with this machine as long as it's maintained. So let's wrap there. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.